Hey, what's up, everybody? Today, we're going to be looking at a card that some people hate and some people love, and that's the Delta Reserve card by American Express. I've used Delta Sky Miles to travel to places like South Africa, Brazil, Togo, and many other cities within the U.S., and I definitely benefited from many of the perks that card holders get. So by reviewing the card today, I hope I can help you decide if it's the card for you or not. If this kind of content interests you, consider subscribing to the channel. But let's go ahead and get into it. So if you haven't seen any of my other Delta Sky Mile card reviews, Delta has four co-branded personal credit cards that are all issued by American Express. You have the card we'll be reviewing today, the Delta Reserve card, which has an annual fee of $650. And for those who want to add authorized users, that will be an additional $175 annual fee per card. Then there's the Delta Platinum, which has a $350 annual fee. You have the Delta Gold that has a $150 annual fee, which is waived the first year, by the way. And lastly, you have the Delta Blue card that has no annual fee. A wide variety of cards with a wide range of different perks and benefits for different types of travelers. Now, as of the recording of this video, the Delta Reserve has a sign-up offer of 100,000 miles after you spend $6,000 on the card in the first six months of having it. The points guide values Delta miles at about 1.2 cents per mile. So this 100,000 mile sign-up bonus would be valued at about $1,200, which is really good. I usually use the points guide's valuations when I don't have enough data to make my own conclusions, which is the case for Delta as I've only flown them once in the past two years. Anyway, this increased offer is scheduled to end October 23rd. So if you're interested, you might want to apply before then. Now that we've looked at the increased signup offer, let's take a look at the car's point earning categories to see what you'll earn on your everyday spending. Car holders are going to earn 3x on Delta purchases and 1x on everything else. That's it. At that 1.2 cents per mile valuation, that's 3.6% back on Delta purchases and 1.2% back on everything else. That's absolutely terrible, and American Express and Delta should be ashamed, as this is a car with a $650 annual fee. Delta's non-premium cars have better earning rates than this. Anyway, let's take a look at the perks and benefits of the car to see if they make up for it here. But buckle up, because there's a lot of benefits that come with this car. Starting off with lounge access, car holders are going to get complimentary Delta Sky Club access, as well as four guest passes each year. Not only that, you'll also get complimentary access to American Express Centurion lounges and Escape lounges when flying Delta. This is an excellent perk. I know a few people who have this car primarily for lounge access. But hold on. Effective February 2025, car holders will only receive 15 Delta Sky Club visits per year instead of the unlimited number of visits they get now. After February 2025, if you want unlimited visits, you'll have to spend $75,000 or more on the car in a calendar year. If you use all 15 of your yearly visits and don't hit the $75,000, you can purchase club passes at a rate of $50 per person using your card. Delta is tripping. With those low earning rates on everyday spend and now this, it's like they don't want people to get this card. Anyway, moving on, let's take a look at some of the flight benefits. First, car holders and their companions can get their first check bag free. A check bag with Delta is around $70 per person on a round trip Delta flight. So for my family of four, that's a potential savings of up to $280 per round trip flight. With this benefit alone, one flight can help me claw back almost half that annual fee. Next, car holders will receive a companion certificate on a first class Delta Comfort Plus or main cabin round trip flight within the US and or Mexico, the Caribbean or Central America. Depending on where and when you're traveling, this companion certificate can easily be worth more than what the annual fee costs, and some. A major benefit. Continuing on, Delta has a program called Takeoff 15, where car holders are going to save 15% on award travel on all Delta flights booked on Delta.com and on the Fly Delta app. So basically, on a flight that would have cost you 60,000 miles, that same flight is now only going to cost you 51,000 miles. That's a pretty decent savings, especially since the car's point earning potential isn't that good. All right, next, car holders who are not already medallion members, which is the name of Delta's elite status, 
will also get added to Delta's complimentary upgrade list, which can get you seat upgrades after Delta Sky Miles Medallion members. The car also comes with other flight benefits, such as priority boarding and 20% back on in-flight purchases. All right, now let's switch gears and take a look at some of the benefits pertaining to Delta's medallion statuses. So first, Delta has four status levels, medallion silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Every status level gets you more and more benefits as you climb each tier. And I must admit, Delta has some great benefits that come with their different levels of status. I'm talking first class upgrades, flight vouchers, bonus miles, and a bunch of other stuff. Again, depending on your level of status. Now to earn medallion status with Delta, you need to earn what they call medallion qualifying dollars, or MQDs. You'll need 5,000 MQDs to earn silver, 10,000 for gold, 15,000 for platinum, and 28,000 for diamond. Normally, regular SkyMile members earn one MQD for every dollar you spend with Delta. However, Delta Reserve car holders also get one MQD for every $10 you spend on the car on all purchase, whether with Delta or not. This can help you get status faster for the following medallion year. On top of that, each year, car holders will also get an MQD head start of 2,500 MQDs every year. Also, if you're already a medallion member, you'll have upgrade priority over other medallion members in your same tier, if you have the Delta Reserve card. The last thing I'll mention in this section is that you're going to get Hertz Rental Car President Circle status, which gets you things like car class upgrades, 50% more bonus points, and more. So as you can see, if you're chasing status with Delta, that's where this car shines. A lot of opportunities to earn your way up the status chain and get even more benefits. Next, let's take a look at the credits you'll get for being a car holder. The first one is a Global Entry TSA PreCheck Application Fee Credit which are both programs that can save you a lot of time going through airport security. Next, you're gonna get a $120 rideshare credit, which is broken up into $10 back in statement credits each month on US rideshare purchases. You'll get a $200 Delta Stage credit when you use your Delta Reserve to book prepaid hotels or vacation rentals through the Delta Stage program on Delta.com. And lastly, you'll get a $240 Ritzy credit, which by the way is a dining reservation service. This is broken up into $20 back in statement credits each month after you pay for purchases with US Retsi restaurants. I like the rideshare credit as I'm always using one of those services, but I personally don't know anybody who uses Retsi. That credit would be a huge waste for me. However, I'm a huge fan of Global Entry and TSA PreCheck as I'm using at least one of those services on a monthly basis. All right, lastly, let's take a look at the insurances and protections that Delta Reserve car holders will receive. You're gonna get trip cancellation and trip interruption insurance, trip delay insurance, baggage insurance, secondary car rental insurance, return protection, purchase protection, and extended warranty. Basically all the major protections you would expect from a premium travel card. Overall, this is a pretty well-rounded co-branded airline card. However, it does have some major weaknesses. Monster annual fee, terrible point earnings on your everyday spend, and soon to be limited lounge access. However, if you're chasing status, can benefit from the companion pass every year, and in general just fly Delta a lot, then this is for sure a card you should consider. Like I said, back when I flew Delta often, I had this card and greatly benefited from it. You can easily get outsized value. Now, if you don't fly Delta often and aren't chasing status, then the Delta Platinum and Delta Gold cards are really good options. I'll leave my reviews of those cards up on the screen for you. What are your thoughts on the Delta Reserve card, as well as the changes they've been making? Is this a card you would consider if you flew Delta often? I look forward to hearing from you. I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.